Crunchyroll just committed a federal crime. No, really. So, what they did is they took a, uh, what was it, voice actors, letters, never, never gave them the letters for like five years long, and all the fan items were co distributed among other employees. This is insane. Fuck Crunchyroll. Well, guys, it turns out that Crunchyroll has committed a federal crime. And it's, it's not something that crime. they've done in just one instance. It's something that they've been doing for the last five years. We literally. only found out about it. Literally. But very recently, though, on October 25th, when David Wald, a voice actor, tweeted that if he's been sent anything in the last five years that, in terms of I've fan art, fan letters, anything, then he has not received it because apparently Insanity. Crunchyroll has been stealing all of it. This is in direct violation of U.S. federal. It's literally a crime. They literally committed a crime. What I do wonder is how did he find out? That's what I don't know yet. I don't know how he found out. Maybe whistleblower or something. Law. Or more specifically, the U.S. Code 1702, Obstruction of Correspondence. This has gone absolutely viral. Everyone is talking about it if they're yeah. in the anime sphere in the West. Yeah. And I feel like it's Literally not only the right perfect now. opportunity to raise more awareness on this disgusting behavior, but it's to also sit down absolutely. with you and show you why Crunchyroll has been a terrible company for years now and that this only adds more to their shady, unpleasant history. Let's talk about it. Yeah, recently I was thinking of subscribing to Crunchyroll again, but after this, nah, fuck them. After this, generally fuck them. What the fuck is this, man? It is interesting why they would do it in the first place. What for? Like, literally, what for? Like, did they hold a personal grudge against him? Like, what? Oh my god. So Crunchyroll, as it stands, is the biggest anime distributor slash streamer in the West. So if you're outside of Asia, this is- It's not a crime due to the fans sending mail to a company address. Um... It is withholding it from the actual rece uh, recipient, though, right? Like, okay, they are sending it to the address, but it is, in the end, like, they have the top address. They have the top address, and then they have the, like, the actual recipients. I, 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 I'm sorry, my English is bad again. I don't know how to explain it. You're outside of Asia, this is now, and that this only adds more to their shady, unpleasant history. Let's talk about it. So Crunchyroll, as it stands, is the biggest anime distributor slash streamer in the West. Since Crunchyroll Sotos is an illegal streaming site, I actually do so not know. So if you're know. outside of Asia, this is most likely the service that you're using for anime. Unless you're a pirate. Some people, and even publications, <laughs> like the South China Morning Post, Credit Crunchyroll for turning Japanese anime mainstream in the West. It's a very impressive company. I... Can we really credit Munch... Munchyroll? What the fuck? Crunchyroll for turning it mainstream? I think that's debatable. Yes? No? See? Like, even you guys have, like, different opinions on this. I think that one's debatable. I would think Pokemon? Mm. Mm. Pokemon made it mainstream? I don't know about that one. Stay aware, the only official site that wasn't one of those grey areas. Crunchyroll, maybe Funimation and Focus more probably. Sailor Moon, Pokemon DBZ. I mean, yes, but we're talking about like more mainstream, right? Just because animes were shown on TV, like in the early 90s and 2000s, doesn't mean that it was mainstream. Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon weren't mainstream. Dragon Ball Z wasn't mainstream either. Like, I think anime only just like in the recent years has recent years really has become mainstream. Where it's like literally normal for people to watch anime. Because like fucking what, like 10, 15 years ago it was like people would be called nerds and fucking shit like that for watching anime. But everyone loved that shit, come on. I do Bro, I do agree. Like, it was amazing, but we were still being called fucking nerds for it. I'm a young Gen Z and I remember when I was a kid, anime was still super made fun of. Literally, that's what I mean. My entire school watched DBZ in the 90s. Okay. I'm sure your teachers didn't. It's more normal for people to watch anime because the ones growing up with 
became adults. Betty, that is a fucking great point. Now that's a great point, actually. That's an amazing point. The people that grew up with anime are now adults. You know what? I think... Amazing point. That's probably the reason, not Crunchyroll. ...company with its size in non-Asian countries and its catalog. But it wasn't always this anime licensing sweetheart. In fact, at some point, Japanese license holders wanted to take the website down. Oh, you really? see, the website was founded in 2006, and back then it was a pirating website. Oh, Not a single thing on this page One of you guys is mentioned this. legal. But it wasn't just about anime, it was about anything. Whether it be Asian drama, things related to video games, it was like YouTube, but for pirates, where anything could be uploaded, there were no limits, except maybe adult videos. This is the exact website you would have seen in 2006. Bleach's 108th episode had just come out, and Naruto's 200... Oh my god. 114th episode had just come out as well. It's a crazy time capsule. In 2008, they somehow convinced a venture... Have you actually... Has anyone here actually used the original Crunchyroll? I didn't even know this was a thing. I didn't even know this existed. A capital firm by the name of Venrock, based out of Palo Alto, California, to invest $4 million into them. After this, they sought to become legal, a legitimate space to share anime content. On January 8th, 2000... Honestly, I think if Crunchyroll wouldn't be fucking sh such a shitty business now that this would have been such a great story. Like, actually, from pirating shit to actually becoming officially licensed shit, man. The nine, they signed a deal with TV Tokyo to host episodes of Naruto Shippuden. Obviously, you can see how like, big of a deal that actually is. And immediately huge, started yeah. to delete all the illegitimate content on its website actually that they don't hold huge. rights to. They then continued to get more and more anime licensed from Japan for their Western audience. And you know what? They had a talent. They knew how to choose the animes that they licensed and then translate it. Because, of course, there's a lot of anime that gets made every single season. This is what made them different. No one could really compete that much with them because anime wasn't really seen as a big deal until very- Oh my god, I still remember watching anime with like the fan translations. And then with the fan translations, whenever something like specific, like very Japanese was mentioned. For example, just like the um, suffix um, chan or san or whatever, they would like then like explain like editor's note chan is to cutesify someone. Bro, that shit was so good, man. Very recently. This is when Sony decided to create Funimation, a direct competitor of Crunchyroll back in 2017. Now, of course, seeing that it's Sony, they had one hell of a lineup of popular anime, but they didn't really know how to pick more underrated ones that the Western audience would enjoy. Yeah, it uh, seems to be right, because I believe, um, looking at this, definitely Crunchyroll at the time being, would have been operated by fans. It literally would have been from fans, for fans, right? And... a Funimation, literally just Corpo. At least, not as well as Crunchyroll did. But honestly, who cares? You have an industry and you have multiple competitors all trying to do their own thing, that's very healthy. But unfortunately, that didn't last too long. In August of 2020, there were reports coming out that Sony actually wanted to buy Crunchyroll. Oh, Things shit. were advancing, they had offered $1.1 billion to buy- I... I think this would have been for the better. In all honesty, as much as I don't like Corpus, I think overall this would have been done for the better. Because right now we do have Funimation and Crunchyroll, and we have anime at too many different places. This time we would have had one service. I think this would have been a good thing, but, well, unfortunately. But on March 24, 2021, as things were coming to a close, the United States Department of Justice extended its review of this because they thought that maybe, just maybe, this could become a monopoly of anime outside of East Asia. Somehow. Oh! Yeah, I guess it would have been a monopoly in that case, yeah, yeah. At Netflix to the anime list too, they got originals. That is true, Netflix does have originals too, and some really good originals. Okay, some way. I don't know who got bribed, who got threatened, but it got approved. And in August 2021, the deal was finalized. It was- Wait, so they did go together? I thought Funimation and Crunchyroll are two separate things. They did go together? Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I remember buying full anime seasons hot cases uh, from America because they 
have been way cheaper than your preemptives on Jesus Christ. Hey, they are different. Animation is under... Under what? Under crunch? Oh, they merge? Okay, you know what? I think... Maybe... Looking at the history, maybe it wasn't a good thing after all. <laughs> maybe it was only a good thing on theory. Maybe it would have been only a good thing in theory, but not on paper. One of the biggest mistakes in the anime industry, because this effectively meant that Sony had become the major monopoly when it comes to anime content outside of Asia. Seeing that Sony owned so many anime streaming websites, including Wakanim, which was in France, they decided to merge everything into Crunchyroll, really solidifying oh, the shit. idea that they're now a monopoly. One of the main reasons why people hate Crunchyroll and of course Sony is due to this monopoly. I mean, look at this email that was sent to existing Funimation customers what does it say? Service update. Thank you for being a loyal Funimation customer to the Funimation service is ending April 2nd, 2024. You can still access the content you love on Crunchyroll, which houses one of the largest anime library subs and dubs, catalogs and simulcasts, as well as games and the Crunchyroll store. They have games now? You don't have to leave your Funimation watch history and Funimation queue behind. You can migrate them to your Crunchyroll. Okay, that's good. Please log into Crunchyroll using your Funimation credentials. If you already have a Crunchyroll account, your accounts will be merged and you will be prompted to migrate your user information along. Okay, that's a good thing. As part of our transition to Crunchyroll, the price of your new Crunchyroll plan will increase from 54 a year to 99 a year beginning January 28, 2025. Future billing will be provided by Crunchyroll. Changes will be reflected in your next billing cycle starting on January 28, 2025 and charged to your current payment method on file. If you want to make... Okay, that's success. This is just a suggestion, but have you seen what Rooster Thief has done? No. No, not in detail. I've seen some things of it, but not in detail. I'm just waiting on SAO like games to make it to real life. Same, man. Same. Same. When the merger happened. The first few the paragraphs are reassuring man. you that, hey, don't worry, your account info isn't going to change, your watch the history, all your preferences, everything is, is staying. But then you read the final paragraph and it says this. As part of our transition to Crunchyroll, the price of your new Crunchyroll plan will increase from $55 a year to $100 a year beginning January 28th, 2025. That's a so lot. yes, the price you were Literally paying had doubled. effectively doubled overnight and you couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> what were you going to do about it? Go to a different service? Oh, wait. Just unsubscribe, lol. <laughs> unsubscribe, lol. Yo, ho, ho, lol. Wait, Sony owns everything and now it's under Crunchyroll. But even worse, and I think this Yo, is probably har, har. the worst part in all this, Funimation had something Crunchyroll didn't. Instead of having to pay for a subscription, you could just flat out buy the anime that you wanted digitally so you could watch it any time. Well, Sony oh. said, f*** you and what you own, you don't actually own anything. This was the explanation Crunchyroll- This is a fucking huge issue within the gaming industry as well. With the entire quote-unquote buying a license and the online service and all of that fucking garbage. This is a huge issue that I think need to be fucking addressed legally. If buying is knowning, <laughs> yeah, pirating ain't stealing. This is definitely a fucking huge issue where laws are protecting the companies more than the consumers, which is ridiculous. ...gave you when you inquired about your Funimation digital copies. They said, we understand that you may have concerns about your digital copies from Funimation. Please note that Crunchyroll does not currently support Funimation digital copies, which means that access to previously available digital copies will gone. not be supported. They should straight up just get a refund. Straight up fucking re refund. They, they essentially got scammed. Their money gone for nothing. Supported. However, we are continuously working to enhance our content offerings and provide you with an exceptional anime streaming experience. We appreciate your understanding and encourage you to explore the extensive anime library available on Crunchyroll. So this was a very disgusting Crazy corporate speak legal? way yeah. of saying that everything you own is now in the gutter. Crazy. You will never be able to access it again. F*** you. <laughs> I mean, Ubisoft said that gamers should get used to not owning their copies. Look at their stuff. You will own nothing, you will eat bugs, you will live in a pot, and you will be happy. <sighs> you will own nothing and you will be happy. You will live in a pot and you will eat the bugs. 
I hate this. I really, really, really hate this. Stock price. <laughs> you do this, not want to be is, like. This is fucking, fucking divine justice. Their stock going down so badly because of that fucking justice. Like Ubisoft. This is what a monopoly actually looks like, and it's terrible. That's not the only thing, though. Look, anime is Japanese. It was created yeah. in Japan. Crunchyroll yes. knows this, and they actually have a studio yes. in Shibuya, Tokyo, to make original anime. At some point, yes. though, they decided to use subscription money to create their own... Pretty sure that... What was it? What was the anime called? Um, Tower of God, I think, is an original Crunchyroll one? ...studio in Burbank, California, to make anime within the United States. As you can see from the rating, 1.6 out of 10, that was oh. an utter disaster. High Guardian Spice is the biggest piece of to come out of anime in the last 10 I have years. No idea what it was marketed as anime it. for diverse groups, most notably anime? highlighting right. their LGBTQ plus representation. Well, you know you f***ed up when even people in the LGBTQ plus hate this f show to death. Like, <laughs> no one likes this. This is Damn. terrible. When you become a monopoly, you become lazy and complacent. You that is true. That is absolutely fucking true. For there to be a healthy um uh what is it for there to be like a healthy relationship with like the customers and consumers and to money as well and to hold people respond like fucking responsible and accountable to keep doing better there needs to be competition because otherwise they will get lazy i mean look at nintendo in the end look at pokemon Look at Pokemon. I hate to fucking admit it, but look at Pokemon. Pokemon definitely has gotten lazy. And because there's barely any fucking competition for Pokemon. And if there is, Pokemon is shutting the competition down. Fan projects are getting shut down from Pokemon. From the Pokemon company. It's ridiculous. You can't call HGS an anime at all. I, I never watched High Guardian Spice. Company forgets who truly gives them the money. They do. They do. They think we own... We have the monopoly in this. We are the leading people. We can do whatever we want. Stop taking risks and you completely forget what made you great in the first place. This show is proof of that. Oh, and let's not forget that at the end of 2023, they had to settle a class action lawsuit with their own consumers because they violated the United States Video Privacy Protection Act what? by disclosing its subscribers' personally identifiable information to third-party companies like Facebook, Adobe, etc. Of course, it's a very large... No. No fucking way. Data selling, yeah. Bro. I mean... Everybody does it, right? Google does it, Apple does it, everyone does it. You know it, I know it, everybody knows it. This happens. But they have been found openly about it. They have been found doing it. Fucking idiots. Be like Google. Be more discreet about it. <laughs> and it gets worse, goddamn. They did not have a TOS call, so it wasn't even on their TOS. Goddamn, they found... Selling data without it being on the TOS. Fucking idiots. List. They initially- That's- that's so- <laughs> That's so embarrassing. They are owned by Sony. And they got caught doing this. How embarrassing. Tried to deny the claim, okay? They lied, but then settled anyway to avoid any uncertainties or expenses no. associated with continuing the case. So not only were they a monopoly, not only did they double the price of annual subscriptions and are offering nothing to show for it, they were also selling their own users' data. And by the way, the settlement was of terrible. It was $30 per Crunchyroll user. Like, wow, thanks. My data wow. probably cost more than that. But these three reasons <laughs> I just gave you, did. I think, are enough for you to think, wow, this is a terrible, lazy monopoly that can do whatever it wants because no one can even compete. This brings us back to the crime that they committed yep. against David. That's why monopolies are bad. Monopolies are just fucking bad for everyone. For consumers, for the economy, for... For the government? Mm, debatable. Debatable. But yeah. David Walt. Now look, David Walt is a seasoned a voice actor. He's been in the industry for a long time. He doesn't just dub anime, which is the act of voice acting English dialogue for something Whoa. that isn't originally in English, but he also voice acted in games. Some of the biggest animes oh, he's dubbed in were Attack on Titan, My Hero Academia, oh, or, or even Vinland Saga. Now you'd think that Crunchyroll would give a veteran voice actor like himself the respect he deserves. Well, no. 
It turns out Crunchyroll has been receiving packages meant for David and distributing them to staff instead without him. Disgusting. This fucking gusting. I I'm just surprised how he got to know about Knowing it. for five years. Look at this tweet as an example. He says, Dear fellow workers at Crunchyroll, below is a photo of the complete contents of one of the packages addressed to me that was open and distributed to employees. If you ended up in possession of any of it, I would very much like it returned to me. And as you can see, there are many things here. I should mention all of this is handmade, even this, even though it looks like an official magazine. Someone handmade this for him? For the characters he's voicing, I'm guessing? Bro, this actually just makes me want to cry. Like, this? Like, both as a creator and a fan. This is so terrible. This is so fucking terrible. The character itself is Ainosuke Shindo, and this is someone that David voices in dub. And Harumi quote tweeted this, saying, I remember when my friend put this together to send to you. It was a group effort. Everyone oh was God. so looking forward to you getting it. This is extremely heartbreaking. David replies yeah. and says, I promise you the situation will be rectified. We're just lucky you sent me a photo of the unique contents and the USPS tracking info. To which Harumi said, it was all their efforts in doing so. I really hope this gets resolved. I'm so sorry to hear about this. So imagine taking so this much time to make a care package like this. Specific this is so fucking hate. Heartbreaking, bro. Why even bother doing something like that? Who now? Like, from who? Whose perspective? This is despicable, it really is. Now we know how he came to know. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. That's just petty and selfish? It is. Sadly, the legal system in US doesn't see it that way. Fuck. One moment. I just want to talk to them real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Specifically for the person dubbing your favorite character in an anime how and finding out- How many packages were nicked from him? Five years long worth of content. Five years long worth of content. Specifically for the person dubbing your favorite character in an anime and finding out so much later that no, it was just passed around employees and he never received it. I mean, imagine- Thing how David feels having something like this made specifically for him and not even receiving and not even being notified about it. It's insane. There was a mm -hmm. quote tweet saying that all the employees should be fired for this, but David specified the employees are definitely not to blame. No, they're not. They're they didn't even know. Like, how would the employees know? The employees just were like, hey, what a gift. Thank you. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Like, no. The fucking... HR and the I ops are fucking at fault for this. Try not to die on your food this time, okay, Steamer? Walked by the company freebies <laughs> table and thought something looked cool. The management who elected to take this course of action, however, are another matter. Yeah, the management. If you work in a company that does a lot of collaborations, you'd understand this perfectly. The companies you work with will send you freebies all the time and you take them. Yeah. But someone else in higher management getting a package that says David Wald choosing to open it and then distribute it to employees, that's something else entirely. I've also seen some people say, well, Disgusting. why didn't he just put his home address? This is partly his fault. Well, What? Is he he's supposed to dox himself? He's supposed to dox himself? I'm sorry, but if I work at a company like Crunchyroll, which has the main focus of anime and support voice actors and shit, like, hello? <laughs> What? No, I would trust the company I work for to forward the packages meant for the actual person. Think about it this way. If there was a crazy obsessed fan out there, wouldn't they just go to his house, knock on the door and leave a package for him personally? What David did is actually very common. If you're watching this video yeah. and work in an office, you probably do the same thing. Maybe you send your Amazon packages to your office. That way you receive them on the job. And with no one letting him know that there's a package that arrived at Crunchyroll, like, how would he know? The only reason he knew about this was because the people who sent it gave him the tracking info. He saw it arrived and that he never received it. That's what's incredible here. So what the hell After happens next? As you might have already now. guessed, stealing mail in the United States is a... F Could have dealt with it with a P.O. box, though, or his agent. Yes! 
on one hand. On the other hand, if he's actively employed by Crunchyroll, which seems to be the case for this guy here, because Crunchyroll is um, having their own studio and shit now, I don't think it's... I think it's very common for voice actors to actually receive packages through the company they're employed through. I think that is very common. On the other hand, I don't think it's very common for voice actors to have a P.O. box. I don't blame him for these accents. I also get my mail delivered to work. I think that's completely fine. You'd never expect your company to see a mail from you. Exactly. Like, you'd be in good faith about your company. As an employee, I wouldn't even think that the company would do this, right? Like, I would... Ha I, I would think... That the company I work for would be in good faith to forward the mails addressed to me as a person to me. Federal crime. I'd love to sit here and tell you that this is going to be the end of Crunchyroll, but the law itself it's is actually not. pretty damn vague. According to Legal Mindset, who is a lawyer mm, on YouTube go. that I like to reference sometimes whenever there are legal problems, this line right here that says, before it has been delivered to the person to whom it was directed is the problem. So the law itself says, oh yeah, if you tamper with something before it's delivered to the person, you're in trouble. But what is the person? It says the person to whom it was directed. Well, technically mm. the package says David, sure, but the address- But the address says Crunchyroll. Address is Crunchyroll HQ. When the judge looks at this, they will actually side with Crunchyroll, unfortunately. Because technically the package arrived at the right address. Whether someone else opened it or tampered with it doesn't really matter. You're not the only one to think that this sucks, but unfortunately, that's the legal reality. I do hope that the higher up manager, though, suffers direct consequences because this is disgusting and we have to ask this question. How many other voice actors are going through the same yeah, thing without literally. even knowing? That's this is it. why we need a statement from Crunchyroll ASAP. Crunchyroll has been in absolute silence. Everyone has been replying to their tweets asking for answers and they only gave one on the 27th of October, two days after David Walt's tweet. A oh, Crunchyroll shit. spokesperson told Anime News Network that it's investigating the situation. Here's the full statement. Of course. Anime fans have a special connection with dub voice talent and that emotional expression is important in fueling more love of anime content. We are currently investigating the matter regarding the allegation of undelivered fan mail to a voice actor. We respect the privacy of all our voice actors and do not intentionally open mail or packages yeah, sure. not intended for Crunchyroll. Any fan mail should be sent directly to talent and their management. Fuck you. Fuck you, man. This is such a fuck you statement. This is such a fuck you from Crunchyroll themselves. They're like, that's that's the fan for dressing up to Crunchyroll. Pff, fuck off. Fuck off, man. That last sentence in particular is pretty damn dirty. Like, yeah, sure, okay, you can say that, but you could have also called David five years ago or just sent him an email five years ago when the first package came. Like, you literally could have told him, Yo, don't do this. <laughs> you literally could have told him, like, Hey, yo, David. Th there was mail here for you. Like, can you tell your fans to not do this? Like, are you for real? I told him, hey, your fan mail shouldn't be coming to us. It should come to you. But no, instead, you chose to open it for five years. Five distribute years. it for five years. And only now are caught because he had a tracking number from a specific fan. So again, Crunchyroll is yet in another controversy and they come out extremely unlikable. As also, I do want to add to this, usually as a fan, it is usually easier to think, okay, I can send this fan mail to the actual company because it's easier and it's more accessible to find the company's email rather than, not email, the company's address rather than finding a an individual's PO address or whatever, if you don't know where to actually find them. It's not as easy as finding the corpus address, is what I want to say with that. Does it give an equivalent from Suhendon Fon in English? I don't know about that. You also mentioned a lot of other illegal stuff has seen around the company and their policies. As bruh. if it's effortless for them. Of course, David's allegations don't end here. He says in a tweet shortly after revealing that his mail's been stolen, saying, Me thinking. Geez, it's a good thing I didn't tell them about the gay discrimination, or the medical discrimination, or the union busting, or the continuous culture of fear, or the hostile workplace environment, or 
three dots. Oh. Additionally, another voice actress by the name of Alexis Tipton replied to his tweet saying, Oh my god, what the f***? Adding this to the fact that they constantly give out free merch to the employees and voice actors aren't allowed to participate. We also no longer get free copies of our own work. We don't even get invited to Christmas parties. We are just a product. That's disgusting. The voice actors are literally just a, pr uh, a product to them. What? And all the free merch is just given to the employees. But voice actors, fuck them. Bro! With voice actors are carrying industries. Now, to be fair, English voice actors uh, uh, often sucks ass, right? But voice actors are so fucking important. Like, nonetheless, voice actors are important and actually, like, helping and carrying the fucking industry. Like, without voice actors, we wouldn't have had English dubs. And anime wouldn't be mainstream then, because a lot of people still do watch anime in English, which should be a fucking sin, but you know what? Whatever. Look, there's a big worry already within the voice acting community that AI is going to come in and yeah. steal all their jobs. The fact that Crunchyroll treats their voice actors like complete, utter, disposable trash on the street tells me that they're probably already looking into AI technology yeah, to not have to hire voice actors ever case. again. Monopolies suck, and I hope that Crunchyroll gets what's coming to them. I also hope that David can get all of his stuff back. But unfortunately, I the idea that, of a lawsuit yeah. doesn't really seem very viable. I doubt or at least that's what it. legal experts say. Guys, stay safe out there. And if you have any important mail coming your way, do not list your company as the address. Just send it straight to your door instead. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next or video like, whenever that- get a P.O. box. Like, not straight to your door, man. <laughs> I don't think he actually meant that, but- That yeah. is. I love you. Mwah. This is Gotham Eagle. Got them evil, ridiculous, and yeah, not subscribing to Crunchyroll ever again. Monopoly isn't a crime. Pretty sure Monopoly is a crime. Is it not? People forget PO boxes exist. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it Red and Shogun Steam? I do not know. Again, I wasn't sub to Crunchy ever. I've been sub to Crunchy before, but yeah. As I said at the start of the video, I was thinking of um, resubbing to Crunchyroll, but after this, this is absolutely fucking disgusting, man. This is absolutely fucking disgusting. Playing Monopoly should be a crime. <laughs> Mon Monopolies are only a crime when the government enforces it. Yeah, fair enough. Fair. Monopolies aren't necessarily a crime, but a fair. The way it is enforced can easily land you in hot water. Ah, okay. Ya ha ha, pirate's life is for me. Ya ha ha, ba bam ba 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 Do what you want, cause a pirate afraid. You are a pirate. Ya ha, fiddle Being a pirate is awesome to be. Do what you want, cause a pirate is free. You are a pirate.